Hi guys, welcome back to another episode of Keep Austin Keto Kitchen. Today I'm gonna to be making some cranberry sauce for you and I'll just do a quick run through of the ingredients that you'll need to make the cranberry sauce. Um, so you're gonna just need a bag of cranberries and this is going to be a 12 ounce bag. I'm using fresh. Um, you could use frozen too if you wanted. The size is a little different. I think for frozen, sometimes they're about 10 ounces. So um, if you wanna use frozen, that's fine too. Um, I've got a half a cup of water and a half a cup of sherry. Um, this is the sherry I'm using. Just make sure um, if you're using sherry, you buy it at the liquor store, not the grocery store. Uh, this is the Harvey's Bristol Cream uh, Sherry. If you don't want to use sherry, go ahead and just do a full cup of water. And so instead of a half a cup of sherry um, and a half a cup of water, just make it a full cup of water. But I like the flavor that the sherry adds. Um, you'll also need a half cup of sugar, and I'm using monk fruit. So um if monk fruit doesn't work for you uh go ahead and feel free to substitute the one that works for you you'll also need some orange flavoring um and you'll also need some ginger uh, and i did uh grind this ginger up i did use a um a plain grater and i just grated up a tablespoon of ginger that i'm using here in this cup so the first thing we're going to do is put and i'll tilt the camera down i'm going to go ahead and put the alcohol and the water in for you let me get this thing turned around here so you can see. And I'll just get that into the stove there. There we go. Okay, so the first thing I did was pour the half cup water and the half cup of uh, Harvey's Bristol cream uh, into the pots. I do have a whisker somewhere. I'm just gonna warm this up really quick and go ahead and put in the half cup of sugar. And also, um, if, the, if you feel like that's too much sugar for you, pill, please feel free to um, reduce the amount of sugar you're using it. Um, and then this is what you'll get here for your ginger, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and add that into the pan. The first thing I'm gonna do um, once I add the cranberries in is I'm gonna turn the heat up uh, to about medium high. Um, and let this get to a boil. And then once it reaches a boil, let the cranberries burst open. So you just want them to um, slightly burst open. Uh, once they burst open, we're going to reduce and simmer for 20 minutes. So I'm gonna go ahead and let this get started. And then I'll be back to show you what it looks like once the cranberries burst. Okay, I just wanted to come back really quick and show you that they burst. So you just want them to look like this. So once they start to burst, um, we're gonna go ahead and reduce the temperature a little bit and just have it at a simmer. And um, we're gonna go ahead and simmer that for 20 minutes and then I'll be back. So to make sure the only thing that you haven't added in um, is the orange flavoring and we're going to add that in at the very end once we turn it off to cool because you don't want this flavor to change via the cooking process. Um, it'll just get too hot and make it a weird flavor. So let's go ahead and leave the orange extract out. 20 minutes um, on a low simmer and I'll be back to show you the finished product. Okay, so it's been about 20 minutes and here's what it looks like now, if you can see that. Um, it's cooked down pretty good. So the next thing I'm gonna do is, um, we'll take it off the heat for one. Um, but I'm also going to add in a tablespoon of um, orange flavoring. Um, you can use orange zest if you want, which is, you know, that's also another personal preference. So uh, for me, I'm going to stick to the orange flavoring. It does just about the same thing um, as the orange peel will do. Um, and I'm not sure about the carbs on the orange peel, so that would be, you know, something that you would have to look at and see. Uh, if that fits or works for you. And so just go ahead and stir that in. At this point, you can either leave it as is and you'll still have some whole cranberries in there. As you can see, there's still some whole cranberries. Um, you're gonna let this cool for about 20 minutes. This time I thought I would try a smooth cranberry sauce. So I'm actually going to use my stick blender in here really quick and pulse this down to a smooth cranberry sauce. Just 
just be really careful because it is hot. Um, and don't burn yourself. look here and see how it looks it looks pretty good right there um, that's pretty smooth uh, cranberry sauce right there so I'm gonna let this cool for about the next 20 minutes and I will come back and put it in a storage container for you and um, then you'll just store it in the fridge after that so um, see you in a few minutes 20 minutes to be exact Okay, we're gonna go ahead and get this moved over into, I'm gonna put it in a glass jar um, because I want it to be in the fridge for a little while. So you can either do, if it's cooled enough, you can do a plastic container. Um, if it's not cooled enough, you can go ahead um, and put that in a glass jar. So we'll just go ahead and get this in the jar. You know, it's almost like cranberry jelly. You could put it on toast. Um, first thing in the morning, you know, you can use this on your sandwiches as a spread. It's just really nice pretty consistency and texture. If you don't want to blend it, that's fine too. You don't have to blend it. It's not required um, that you blend. So got this in the jar here. It was, I made a full jar. This jar says 12 ounces at this mark. Well, I filled it all the way up. So we probably got a good 16 ounces of cranberry sauce here. So um, go ahead and like and subscribe to my channel. And if you have any questions about the cranberry sauce, about how to make any changes or anything like that to it, anything else you want to see, Drop me a message down below. See you next time.